Hello and welcome. I'm Holly Wyram, and this is my new show called The Greatest Message. And I have an amazing person here. So she is an artist, but she's an amazing person. And um, I had seen her work and always loved it, loved the colors. But it wasn't until I, um, anyhow, I contacted her and purchased a few pieces, but it wasn't until I made that contact in person or felt the art in person that I realized, oh my God, she's, she's so much more. She's like sharing this energy through everything she creates. So um, here she is, it's Vicki Reed. Thank you so much for joining me, Vicki. Holly, thanks for having me on. So you are an artist, but you do, um, I mean, is all of your, so you do so much spiritual work, so right. much spiritual. So is all of your, I mean, do you feel like you're sharing grace? I'll just say grace, because that's what I feel like you share in your work. Do you feel like you're sharing grace with everything you create? Uh, I like grace. I intentionally feel that the work is infused with love and healing. I have been asking for that and seeing evidence or hearing evidence of that for years, long before I started into the more spiritual art. So even from the late eighties, early nineties, when I was working with the desert botanicals and the desert landscapes, First of all, one of the th reasons I love to do paths and so on was the um, Mary Poppins movie where they got to go on a really fun journey into the sidewalk. They would draw a, a painting, a picture on the sidewalk and go on this really fun journey. So that, so paths were big and then <clears throat> desert botanicals and what I was finding myself doing with those is using color in a way that I now more understand that I'm using frequency mm -hmm. to fill the painting with what is nourishing to me. Like I build it based on my kinesthetic reaction to the piece. And then I just found that there are many who also feel that benefit from those paintings. You know, not everyone, obviously, but if you resonate with that same combination of frequencies, it's amazing. Uh, what used to happen is I had my work in a gallery called Work of Artists, and people would go in there and they'd buy a piece or two, and then they'd come back and buy more and more and more because you can feel, if you're awake to it, you can feel the benefit, so. I agree, I love it. I, um, and, and I, well, and I think part of it, like I bought, I bought several pieces from you, but one of them is that tree that I love. Yes, on and, holy ground, on holy ground. On holy ground, yeah. and I love that tree because um, I look out my kitchen window and see these giant old eucalyptus trees, and that's what it reminds me of. And and I and I love anything that can can you know that can be so simple and connect us to the holiness, right? To to I mean that's what the desert does. Like every, I believe that every area, geographical area has different energy. And, you know, I have a place in Alaska also, but what's the desert is so healing. Uh, agreed. 100%. And option one is to get outside and soak up nature, you know, yes. and we can't, we can't always have option one. Option two, and my big message is surround yourself with things that support you and nourish you visually, you know, texturally, and really create a space, your own space that when you walk in, it feels, looks, sounds, you know, loving, soothing, nurturing. So, and the pieces that I create usually naturally fit into that, <laughs> you know, place for me, because that's where it starts. And then and when, and when I was doing the mandalas, when I started creating the mandalas, I thought I was doing that for everybody else. 
I thought, well, I'm bringing all this, you know, I'm bringing these amazing ambassadors of this, you know, these energetic intentions into the world and yay. <laughs> and um, of course it was for me first. It was for me first. So, so do you keep the original? So, because people can get, I, I don't know, like how, I don't know how many you make or the recreate, but do you keep your originals? I don't keep them on purpose. I have some, some I've let go. The difference with the originals is many of them are um, watercolor on paper. And so they need to be framed and they're a little harder to negotiate. Um, and most of the mandalas, most of the major mandalas are large scale. They're, well, they're not that large, but they're 30 by 30. Uh-oh. That's my, this is my, I love this oil. It's from um, Red Rock Apothecary, Apoc or how do you say that? Apothecary. Oh my God, it's desert. It's like, oh, it's so nice. So Sorry about good. that. Good, see you add in those, that's the other part. It should uh, look beautiful, feel beautiful, sound beautiful, and smell beautiful. <laughs> yes, okay, so I wanna talk more about the mandalas. So yes. you have a lot and they have so much going on. So it's almost right. to be, um, like you get one and it has the potential to balance you, like to balance all your chakras. I mean, it just looks like, it is a holistic piece of work. Well, they will hold space for your intention and they will support your intention. Of course, nothing is going to do anything to you. It's just going to hold space and they are very supportive. And, and in my experience, they've become almost more supportive over time, which I don't know how to explain that other than I feel a little bit like, so it, they were my children and now they've kind of grown up into adulthood maybe. And they're out there doing their, they're on their missions and they're, they're independently uh, fulfilling their energetic purpose. Um, the way this kind of came about was I was doing the desert work and, and I, that was my, I had sort of a claim to fame, you know, on the desert, uh, landscapes and botanicals. And then I actually was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was feeling this call. Like I was hearing, you know, uh, go, go back to the mandalas because I did them when I was a child. I was like, go back to the mandalas. And I, and I was, I was trying to shut that down because I was concerned about, I'm sorry, I keep <clears throat> clearing my throat. I was concerned about the people that were collecting my desert botanicals. I thought, well, you know, people are going to think I'm weird. It doesn't, it doesn't relate in any way I was thinking at the time. And I, I really was trying to push it aside. Well, um, as you probably know, when you're trying to ignore spirit, things get, more accelerated until it comes to the point where you can't ignore it. Mm -hmm. And I had one of those, you can't ignore it any longer uh, experiences, which is uh, a story for another day, because it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty out there. So after that experience, which was in March of, um, I'm sorry, August of 2014, <clears throat> I started and, and initially, you know, I had no, I, I had nothing, but you've got to go back and do more mandalas. And then the idea dropped in, do them in the color so that do them supporting the chakras, do them, you know, and so that was the first. And so I just got started. And the first one to come was healing for the heart chakra. And it's, it's, it's a dark, dark green. So it's, it's green, but it's almost black. And at the time, I had no idea how much oh, heart healing I still needed to do. So, um, but that's the first one that came. 
And then they started to, you know, I started, they started to come with a little more. I started to have a little better understanding of what was happening. And I was actually working on freedom for the sacral chakra. Um, And there was just another one of these incidents that's just like, it was uncanny. And I realized I've got to be journaling this. I got to Now I got to go, I got to journal what's happening. So I started to, I went back and I tried to detail what I had already created. And then I, from then on, I, I, I journaled what was happening while I'm creating the mandala. And what was happening is that, and I think this is true with anything you're creating. When you get the, you know, spirit says, create this and you say, okay, then there's a whole bunch of uh, supporting information, momentum and uh, learning that, that come in to support your creation. So, and that happened over and over and over with the mandalas. It was, um, it was just mind blowing. There were a couple of times I just felt like I wanted to run out in the street and say, you're not going to believe what just happened. Oh, I love that. That is so cool. Yeah. Return to innocence was one in particular that, um, I was, and Return to Innocence, it's not a real popular one, but it's really about uh, re- really about releasing shame. It's about releasing shame. That's how you return to innocence. And um, I think that's a, that's a huge challenge for a lot of us have shame that we're, you know, maybe not even aware of at this point. Absolutely. So, yeah. So can you look at, do you look at them and they're kind of like your spiritual growth? Absolutely. At this point. Yeah. And, and uh, that's why I said, I thought, <laughs> I, I thought I was doing them for the world, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I, and I was, but, but it was for me first and it was a uh, school. It was mandala school. I went to yeah. mandala school and um, yeah. And so if somebody's interested in um, buying and purchasing one of these, do you, do you intuitively guide them? Do you say, oh, you might be interested, you know, do you kind of, do you tune into their energy or do you like, how does that work? Like, yeah, I specifically want, like, this is what I want. I absolutely can do that. If you reach out to me, I mean, if you, if you have some, um, measure of uncertainty, I, that information can come to me and I can, you know, a mandala will come and I can sit. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's, that's an option. I, I, I love that people can maybe, um, see what pops up for them too, you know, like, Oh, look at that. And, or no, that's not, that's not the one, at least not, maybe not for right now. Um, one of the things I'd really love to see people employ and deploy more is that sense of knowing uh, and feeling inside them. Like, what am I responding to? So when you like say you were three, then you were 10, then whatever, were you a spiritual, like, were you, did you, were you spiritually interested in the world? Like, were you was spiritual spirituality important to you all through your life or did it just kind of come up with the art with the well so the the art was kind of always there even from the time and i you know thank god because the art was there because the world did not make a whole lot of sense to me and i tried hard to be and I think this is kind of a common experience. I, when I was very young, I tried to, I was reading, you know, the room and tried to be appropriate (laughs) for what was around me, but it wasn't making any sense to me. And I actually developed a uh, really great relationship with I was told, you know, well, that an imaginary friend, 
I know now it was a guide. And then my family's like, well, you know, you can't be walking around talking about your imaginary, you know, you can't talk about Johnny Murphy. He, he's not real. And so I was kind of crushed, but I'm like, okay. And they, they, they sort of, they challenged me on it. And I thought they knew better. You know, I thought they knew better. And I think we, we often do that. Like we, as the children, we know we're in touch with spirit. We know. And then the adults say, oh no, you know, there's no one there. There's no one there. And you're like, wow, wow, that's weird. Cause I, I swear there's somebody there. And so over time you kind of shut that down, but the art always let me back in there at least a little bit at a time. And that, and that's where, you know, the, the, um, things that I would see in other I don't, realms, that's not the right word, but my, my imagination would bring me a lot of imagery that, that was not referenceable right here. What a gift. And what I think is so interesting about you as a person is obviously, you know, you're amazingly talented. I can say this, you know, I've met you in person once, I think, but I have your art and you just are, you're amazingly talented, but, but even though you're so artistic, you have a very solid logical flair to you, right? Like there's something, right? Like you could have yeah. easily have <laughs> taken a different path and lived in that very logical business world, right? And I think it's very interesting that somehow you have, you have, you know, brought those two together. Yeah, so a foot in both worlds. And I actually do um, some bookkeeping as a part-time yeah you know I can see. And, and and I kind of like that because the the beauty about and I'm not saying accounting because account but bookkeeping has always a clear answer you know yeah. like if it didn't add up you can go back and say oh there it is um, everything else is super abstracted and it keeps getting more and more abstract um, you know as we as as everything expands and our, and our awareness expands and that that's like, uh Oh, like what is solid and what isn't, you know? So I do like the, the. Well, the logical, cause I actually intuitively see you doing much more teaching. And I think the logical part of you helps you um, build a bridge that it does. Um, so I don't know if you're, I just feel like you're going to, I don't know if you're doing like classes, like weekend retreat class, like not our thing, but like really weekend retreat classes, but there's something where you are teaching. I see that for you. You're teaching, you're teaching groups, you're maybe smaller groups, but you're teaching them this spiritual, like you're, you're this experience, spiritual spirit. Well, I can't even talk today. Good Lord. <laughs> there's a lot. It feels, the energy feels very swimmy to me. Yeah. It feels, I, yeah, it feels Piscean. It's kind of like, uh, you know, kind of a little bit dreamy-ish and you could just float off and, you know, yeah. Yeah, I can't talk. But <laughs> yeah. anyhow, I see that for you. So I don't know, have you, have you thought about doing like weekend retreats where people do, they learn how to, how to create their spirit. It's a spiritual experience creating. Right. Man. Right. Well, and I was uh, starting to launch my paint by heart workshops, right. When, you know, a year ago, because what I know, what I understand is that we all came in here knowing how to work magic. We all yeah. came to this, you know, we are born knowing how to touch this and and knowing how to channel, if you will. Yes. And so, and and spirit is equally accessible to everyone. It's yes. just a, it's just a matter of, are you? Can you calm down enough? Can you soothe yourself enough to uh, get quiet to tap in? And then once tapped in, can you just let it come through you without? uh filter or judgment or restriction or you know so and the more you do that the more amazed you're going to be at what comes through you you know so so and in my mind 
the more people that are tapped into spirit and channeling, whether it's, you know, ideas for recipes, you know, food, gardens, uh, you know, art, um, whatever it is, writing, then the better world we're in. Because if you're conscious and aware, uh, chances are a lot slimmer that you're going to react uh, from an unconscious wounded place and that you're going to show up and be participating in this really valuable embodiment experience that we're having. I mean, we're super fortunate to be here in bodies. And then we spend all this time trying to get, get out, you know, get away from the body. And, you know, so as you channel spirit and you let that experience fully into the body, <clears throat> you, we have more of a chance to show up and have a full present juicy, delicious life. I, I love it. Um, yeah, I'm so glad that I met you. Okay, I have a question. Me too. I'm glad we met. This is great. I, it's just, I always think that. It's like, I, I um, yeah, there's just certain people that come into your life and it's like, oh my God, in, this is what I hope for everybody. Find people that you get and that yeah, they get yeah. you, right? Yes, Find yes. People that it's like, it's a match because I, to speak the language of understanding that there's right, that there's more is like such a gift. And literally like when you drove to my house to deliver the art and you were listening to the same music that I listened to, <laughs> it's so yeah. funny. So not on car. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I listen to when I meditate every morning. It's so funny. She's um, so uh, that is some of the most soothing. Like I pretty much always have that on when I'm driving now yeah. because it, because it keeps me from uh, being triggered in traffic. Like it really, it just, does. And when I get where I'm going, I, I show up calm and ready for the experience rather than, you know, like, ah, it's just, ah. so. I get it. Um, okay, so you do a lot of animals, you do birds, you do horses. Is there a reason, like, um, is there, do you have a special connection to horses, birds, anything like that? Well, I do. I, um, not that I ride horses, but I love them visually and energetically. I like doing empowered women as well. Oh yeah, you do. What I'm really doing right now is just, I'm actually painting frequency through color and because I maybe not quite ready for abstract, or maybe I think maybe everybody else isn't quite ready for abstract, I still ha ha bring a figurative element to it. But for the most part, I'm using color and pattern to um, engage you uh, frequency and vibration wise. So this is so interesting to me because you know, in one meditation I was shown um, how, and I know other people teach this, but how it's between the form, right? It's the energy like, right, it's between the form. Yeah. And so do you, I mean, if I sat down across from you, could you paint like my, I mean, could, would you feel comfortable like this is vibrationally what you feel like? I don't know if I have that and I'd be willing to try. I mean, but I don't know if I have that interpretive language or ability yet. Yeah. Here's what, here's what happened when I, so I did the seven chakra mandalas and then I was kind of disappointed. I'm like, oh my God, that is it over, you know? And then I heard, you know, do one on forgiveness. And yeah. I was like, um, how do I paint an energy how do I paint a you know intention how do I bring an intention which is completely not visual onto paper and make it visual so I didn't have the I didn't have the ability to understand that and in fact the the first one that I started ended up being uh the mandala for spring because oh, that's beautiful I love that one. I love that one too uh, but the first thing that came was a red rose because I was thinking, 
forgiveness. Okay. What happens when, you know, you want to make up, somebody brings you flowers or something. So, but as with anything new and with your intention, if you sit with it and keep, okay. So a big one is approach, not knowing with curiosity instead of fear. That's big for me. So keep asking, you know, because the first thing, because I like to know. So the first thing that often, often happens for me is like, oh my God, I don't know. But if you can say, well, you know what? I don't know. I wonder what would happen if I did this. And I wonder what would happen if I tried this. And then spirit gives you the information. You know, it's just like, oh, here you go. Here you go. Try this, try this. And um, <clears throat> so the second time around, the forgiveness mandala started with a Celtic symbol for wisdom. Mm. And there's elements in that forgiveness mandala that just, kind of continue to, um, blow my mind. And, um, I have had, I have experienced the, the power of it. Um, after my ex-husband and we had been through a kind of a contentious divorce and it was, I think it was 2000 and I did this mandala in 2005 and he actually came to my house one day and came to the front door and unfolded a little piece of paper. And he said, I just want to ask for your forgiveness um, on, uh, you know, and, and I'm st I, st I still feel totally emotional. And I, you know, yeah, I don't know if it had anything to do with it, but like I said, um, they hold space for you and sort of remind you of your intention. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm really open to forgiveness and I'm wanting more energy of forgiveness in my life for myself and for everyone else. I want forgiveness. I want that, that freedom of, you know, not having charge when certain people show up. It's so, so powerful. And it's, it's, um, I thank you for the work you're doing for sure, because it's not, it's helping so many, but it's, thank I you. think it's thank interesting, you. you know, so I just bought my second round of pictures from you, but, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> my husband yeah. and I, so we have a place in Alaska and a place here, and we want you to create something for us that we can have a piece here and a piece there. Yes. Yes. Um, so, and I, you know, I'll give you some words and then just have you create it. Yeah. But, yes. Okay. But that's the, you know, if, if people don't get anything else from this, I believe your artwork is magical. I believe mini artwork is magical, but I believe your artwork is magical. I believe, you know, like, you know, for example, above my computer right now, I have the one with the Lotus and the heart. Um, oh yeah. Abundant heart. Yeah. Abundant yeah. Yeah. Heart. Yeah. And I have that, so I see it all the time when I'm working. Um, but it's it like radiates beauty, right? Like I it, and and that's the piece is like and kind of like what you said, create a sanctuary in your home somewhere where you feel yeah. that. But if anybody listening is going through something and you just feel like you need an anchor in forgiveness, you need an anchor in prosperity, you need an anchor in love, whatever it is that you feel like you need a little, you know, you want to be connected to it, reach out and look at or contact Vicki, right? Yeah. You, yeah. They can just email, email me. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a little, yeah. Uh, convo and, uh, yeah, because, uh, right now reach out because there's a lot of support. There's a lot of support. There's a lot more tools. There's a lot of, uh, as you are probably, you know, super aware, there's a lot of support in the unseen realms to transform, to release, to let go of the burdens and to, yeah. to step into a greater, uh, more, you know, robust, joyful experience of life and, and do what we do, what we're here to do, which is in just in part, you know, uh, be conscious and love each other. So, yeah, absolutely. I, and you know, one of the things, so I just was on a podcast interview, like from 10 to 11, and then I hopped on with you, which is so funny. 
But it's, you know, one of the things that I, so I work with different people, different groups and stuff, but it's really like after you're med- after you meditate in the morning, you know, pull in, say, I am filled with, I am aligned with joy and just yes. fill or I, with yeah. it. I vibrate joy. I attract joy or whatever it is you want. Or I am joy. I, I am, am joy. joy. And I, then have yeah. a piece of art that, that holds that space for you. And yeah. you, you know, your transformation will happen. That transformation. It, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that I am is very powerful. It's, uh, one it's, of the things, I, one of the things I'm been saying is I, and you can flip it back. I am love embodied, love embodied. I am. I, you know what? I do that every morning. Yeah, I, me too. Yeah. Me too. Because it, yeah. Okay, well, you're so, claiming it. You're claiming it. And you know, Lord, they say, right they say the angels are just waiting, like ask for help, ask for yes. help. And they're just going to rush in and, and support you. And so, and even if you need to claim it, say, you know what? You're helping me today. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and honestly, I do it for myself. I do it for my family, yeah. right? I do it for my family. I fill my home up with love and surround. Yes. I do it for, and, and, and at the end, I do it for all beings in all directions. So it's yes. not just, it's not just, it's all beings in all directions. It could well, be 500 centuries ago. It doesn't matter. All beings, all directions. Because we are all one, you know, yes. newsflash, we're yeah. all, we're all, <laughs> right. we're all one consciousness. So if one person is suffering, everyone, you know, like Khalil yeah. Gibran says, there's not, uh, there's a, a single leaf does not yellow without the silent knowledge of the entire tree. So yeah, praying for everyone is praying for yourself, you know? Absolutely. So it's, it's yeah. And okay. I, I do refresh the intention every day that everywhere the artwork is, even if it's electronic, uh, love and healing energy is, is, uh, transmitted through it to the, you know, for the best benefit of all. So I love that. And, and I know you do, and I do the same thing for my clients. I put them, I mean, and that is a gift, right? I like, I feel, yes, thank you for doing that. Cause I have your art, but it's a gift that you are in that place of awareness. It's a gift, right? It's a gift that we share that place of awareness. It's a gift that, right. That we are holding space for that awareness. I love that. Okay, so you and I are doing something um, kind of special, and hopefully this is just the first of many, but we are doing, um, I'm hosting a retreat in the beginning of May, May um, 7th. 7th. Yeah, well, it actually starts the 6th. But oh, yeah. okay, well, I'll be there. You'll be there on the 7th. So you are leading the people as a small retreat. You are leading them through a heart opening. Paint I'm by sorry. heart, paint by yeah. heart, which really just refers to, you, you are, you already know how to do this. And if you relax enough to let go of the, you know, restrictions uh, in your way, uh, it'll just flow out. And, and there's, I, you know, there's people that have already had amazing experience with that. And, um, one lady came and she's like, well, I'm not too sure, but, and she did a piece and, you know, it's just your own, like you do whatever we do a, a meditation and then I'm going to hold space for you to create in whatever way you feel guided. And she did this piece and uh, she's like, yeah, I don't really like it. And she, she went home and she said, I was looking at it. And a couple of days later, all of a sudden I realized and she had put in there like I am abundant or whatever. And she said, I realized my painting was talking to me, communicating to me. And it was what she had expressed out was being expressed back to her. And she's like, oh my God, I get it. And she said they had been trying to get a new house. And she said within like a week, within a week or two, she, they had the new house. And I, I thought, okay, well, so this, th this is available for you when you show up. I, I'm not doing that, okay? But when you show up and let that flow through and then, you know, 
check back in, this is what's possible. Absolutely. You know, I almost posted yesterday on Instagram that, you know, we create our signs. I, I was like trying to find the right words, but we create our signs. We create, we create our blocks, but of course we also recreate our signs. We create yes. what, what we understand. And I was like trying to find the right, right. words. I didn't quite post it, but that's exactly it. We create what we're going to understand, what art, because it's our language. Right. And so when you see something and you think, oh, was that, you know, was that my mom? Yes, it was. Stop. <laughs> Stop second guessing it. Yes, yes, it was. Yes. Okay. Um, Vicki, if you had one, besides you have to tell us how to reach you. Um, and if anybody also, you can contact me and I'll send you. <laughs> um, but if you had one message, one greatest message to sir, you know, that you would want everybody to understand, what would it be? So make the investment in yourself. Uh, to coming home to yourself and bringing back into the fold all of the maybe wounded forgotten parts of you that are still with you but you haven't loved them home yet nice I love that beautiful 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 um and your website is vickyreed.com okay perfect um and I'm so excited about the work you and I yeah. are going to be so excited and you'll have, am I, do you, are you bringing enough for me to create also? Absolutely. Oh my God. Yeah. You'll be mad if I don't, you, you'll feel. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm not like a, you know, I write and stuff, but I'm not. Doesn't like matter. A, no, that's the whole thing. It, it doesn't matter. That's okay. see, this is, this is one of the wounds and there's, there's a lot of people out there that at somewhere along the way, they showed something to someone and someone said, oh, what's that? You're terrible. And so then that part got shut down. And that's really unfortunate because you'll yep. see, you'll see when yeah, you, so, you'll, yeah. So excited. And I, and I wish you could spend more time there, but we have you for um, on Saturday the 7th. So, and we'll do more things together. I'm just yeah, well, yeah. I'm super excited. So um, reach out to Vicki Reed. If you have questions, um, reach out to me. I'll, I'll steer you. But I, I can honestly say love, love, love her energy, love, love, love her work and just her as a person, like what she's sharing with the world. So appreciate it. So Thank um, you, Vicki, I will see, well, I'll see you sooner because you're going to, you're going to deliver. Oh, your art. stuff's ready. Yeah. 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 So, okay. I'm going to stop recording.